So to start off making your pork chops with pineapple, you want to start off with a fistful of garlic. After you finely chopped all your garlic, you're going to take an onion. I cut off the ends first. Just like that. Then I take off all this outer skin. It makes it easier to take off the outer skin if you chop off the ends first. Then, although your onion was covered in the skin that was protecting it from the outside, I personally like washing it with water before I start cutting it. I don't know if that does anything, but it personally makes me feel better. So after washing it, you're gonna wanna cut it in half like this. It's really easy to go from here. And then you're gonna take only one half, put this other half away, and you're going to cut it the way that you see the ridges. So the top and bottom that I cut off were here, the half that I cut off is right here, and then the ridges are right here. You can see where the lines are, so that's how I like to cut it that way. And if you have a really good sharp knife, you will have no problem. I used to have really dull knives before and it gave me so much trouble to cut anything. I thought that I was just weak. And then my housemate, when I moved over here, sharpened my knives and it's like a world of a difference. Now I can actually cut things and I don't feel weak. So for this, I personally like to keep my onions just long like this, you know, because they're easier to grab when you are actually eating. So we're gonna leave them long like this. And then when we throw them in the uh, pan, we're going to kind of take them apart so that they all cook evenly and when you eat your pork chops you can get an even amount of onion on each pork chop. So after you finish with your garlic and your onion you want to put it separately then grab your package of pork chops. You're going to want to make sure they're not frozen, that they're completely good to go. You want to rinse out all the blood first. After you've rinsed your pork chops, you're gonna wanna take them back to the cutting board. You can trim the fat here if you want. I don't really mind it, but as you can see, look how thick this is. To cook thoroughly because this is pork and you do not want to keep this raw at all because you can get very, very sick. I'm going to cut it into three pieces. I'm going to cut it here, cut it here, and by the looks of it, I bought a package of six of these. This is gonna last me the whole week. So first, I'm going to make an incision in this part of the body. And like I said, if you have a sharpened knife, it should be super easy to cut through this. Because even though the meat is very like tough and thick, you know, boom, there it is. That's piece number one. And it was super easy for me. So we cut it into three different pieces. This was one piece cut into three. See that now they're thin enough that they're going to be able to cook through. You want to do this six times, then you want to marinate and start the heating process. Now I'm going to put the seasoning on this here pork chops. So first off, I'm gonna start off with some garlic salt, you know, just put a little bit over it. Make sure to cover the entire pork chop. And then I'm going to put some garlic with parsley salt. Since it has other ingredients in it, it doesn't end up being too salty, so you don't have to worry about making your pork chops hella salty. So just cover the whole thing, you know, boom, make it delicious. And now I'm going to put a little bit of 
thyme leaves on there. I just kind of like, whoops, love overflowed. I like covering the whole thing, you know. Ah, I can already smell the fragrance. I'm going to do rosemary leaves. Make it extra flowerful, you know, very nice. And I'm gonna finish off with some basil leaves. You need to have some basil and you need to speak in this accent of you pronounced the word basil because you just came out of the novel Dorian Gray where he pronounces his friend's name as basil. So now that you're done seasoning your pork chops, that's just the way I season it. If you want to do your own thing, you're more than welcome to. This is just my way of seasoning the pork chops. Once these are good to go, then you're ready to heat your pan. I use a huge pan to cook my pork chops just because I have so much. You know, we want to heat up the pan, put some cooking oil. Like I said before, I like personally using corn oil. Once you turn on the fire after a minute or two, you want to check to see how hot it is. It's pretty good to go, so I'm going to go ahead and put in some cooking oil. So I'll put in about this much. See, now the trick with this is you want to get a nonstick pan, right? You want to always have a nonstick pan. But the thing about nonstick pans is you cover it with oil, right? And then after a while, the oil starts receding to the corners and it's like, okay, well, I needed to cover the whole pan now. Can you please help me out? But no, it just does whatever it wants. So now we're going to add some garlic because it's pretty hot, doesn't necessarily need to sizzle. See what I mean? So the oil went to the sides and the garlic's in the center, but it has no oil covering it. <sighs> oh, nonstick pan, when will you ever learn that I need you to let me put the oil where I want it to go? So you kind of have to keep doing that because it keeps just... Yeah. You want to move the garlic around until it's golden brown. Once your garlic is about this color of golden brown, I would recommend to start throwing in the onion. So here we go. That's gonna start cooking together and caramelizing. I personally love when garlic and onion are a little bit burnt because they caramelize really well, but that's just me. I personally don't like raw onions. I don't know if you guys have this experience, but personally, like about 80% of the time whenever I eat raw onion, I get a massive headache. I don't know if it's because of the raw raw onion fumes or what. You know, the raw onion fumes that are in my throat because that onion breath, it just keeps seeping into like your nostrils. You keep breathing it in and it gives you like a headache. But yeah, I personally would rather have my onion cooked. Once you see that the onion is starting to turn transparent and the garlic is getting to that nice golden brown color is when you know it's time to throw the pork chops in. So you wanna make some space. Not everybody does this. I personally do this to make sure that the pork chops cook well. I make space for the pork chops. Then you can go ahead and start lining the pan with every single pork chop. Go ahead and do that. Just squeeze them all in. Ooh, isn't that sound nice? There you go. And then you can make room for all the other ones. I personally then like to put the garlic and the onion on top to make room for the other ones, kind of like this. Just for the flavors to sink in. This really helps for the flavors to really all mix in together. This is what it looks like once the pan is completely full with pork chops. You can definitely add garlic and onion, the quantity to your liking. Personally, I believe that a handful of garlic would have been good for one, two, three pork chops and half an onion would have been good for one, two, three pork chops. 
but you know if you don't like a lot of onion and garlic that might be good enough for you in total but if you like a lot you can definitely keep adding because this is a week's worth of pork chops, so it's a heck of a lot. And once your pan is completely full with all the pork chops in there, you want to cover it up. Once your pork chops have started boiling after about 15 minutes, you wanna flip them. Flippity flip, 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 flip. I like to sing when I cook, it's therapeutic. And if I make up my own songs, that's just bonus points for my mental health. Now that you've flipped all of your pork chops, you'll be able to see why I only seasoned one side. And that's because we're going to now be adding more stuff on this side. So personally, ever since I found out about this, I'm obsessed with it. So you know how there's soy sauce, right? Well, there's a thing called sweet soy sauce. And this thing is the most amazing thing ever because it just makes everything you eat sweeter so what i like to do is i like to drizzle me some like so this wasn't called pork chops with pineapples without a reason you're gonna take a can of sliced pineapples and pineapple juice you're gonna take out all the pineapple juice first to leave only the round cores which is what i specifically love and it looks so good and then you're just gonna just gonna dump them in and then you're gonna give one core to each pork chop and if there's more cores per pork chop well you just get to sweeten your life more but looks like this time we just managed to have the perfect oh no there's one more core than the amount of pork chops we have. That just means we just get to sweeten our life more. And now guess what we're gonna do? Yep, since it's pork and we wanna make sure it cooks really well, we're gonna put the lid back on for another. This is basically what you're gonna get. Delicious, thoroughly cooked pork chops. As you can notice, there's a lot of juice, and depending on what you like, you can either keep the juice, throw it away. Personally, to keep the moisture in the pork chops, I rather put it all with the juice into the container that I keep it in for the week, and then if I choose not to have the juice when I actually serve it, I just leave it there to keep the rest of the pork chops moist. Now I'm just gonna put the pork chops in the container and when I serve it, I'll eat pork chop with a little pineapple core with it. See, here we have a lot of juice. Oh my God, this smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. Yes, I am so pumped for this week's meal. Barely fit all in there. And now I'm going to dump this juice of the gods on top hopefully without much spill. Perfect, that's it. There you got your food for the week, guys. Thanks for tuning in.